All right, today we're going to be checking out Phi 4. This is the latest model drop from Microsoft. It's a 14B parameter. Build is state of the art. Of course, it's as good or comparable to GPT 4.0. Uh, we get claims like this from every model every time, seemingly. But really, it just comes down to my very unscientific and very user-centric uh, testing that I run through here. And again, if you are watching and this is your first time, not an expert in any of this, and I am learning as I am sharing. And so I hope you hit like and subscribe so you can continue along that process with me as we build great systems, test great models, and learn how to do new things with AI on this channel. Okay, so let's get started here. We're gonna check out Phi 4. If you click on tags, you can always see the complete breakdown. So typically when you download a model, you're gonna get the Q4, that's Quant 4, and that's gonna be the smallest size offered for this at 9.1 gigabytes of VRAM space. This does require a decent amount, not huge amount, not 128K context window size. So that'll be a little bit extra, maybe a gigabyte extra or something like that. The Q8 is a 16 gigabyte, but that would be challenging very likely to run in a 16 gigabyte card. Maybe it works, uh, but definitely you would be able to fit that into a 24 gigabyte GPU or a combination of two GPUs that can share their VRAM. You're not gonna, of course, get a performance benefit from that, but you will get a actual uplift in the amount of VRAM and the quant that you can use. So bigger quant, better model, better outputs is the theory. And of course, FP16 checks in at 29 gigabytes. So that one uh, looking like it may have been one of the first models I can think of that is possibly targeted towards being actually optimized for uh, what we're seeing coming out from NVIDIA 32 gigabyte 5090s on deck soon. And so if you're wondering where to start, you can of course check out some of the prior videos and we've done everything from putting together the quad GPU rig that I'm gonna be running the model today on to going through the details of setting up your complete LXC container, Proxmox, Docker, Instance, and all of the commands in copy pasta friendly format. Of course, we've done reviews on smaller builds also like the $350 AI server build. That one has a 12 gigabyte GPU. So if you were thinking about a model for that, the uh, Q4 would be probably your best size bet for that one. So let's go ahead and grab our, I think we're gonna go with the Q8. Uh, I'm just gonna go with the Q8 because I think this is where a lot of people will be at. And we're gonna be of course doing this today in Open Web UI and Olama. And this is basically what I show you how to do in the video as that's downloading, downloading pretty fast. Uh, the video that is here, that is the GPU pass-through LXC with Docker Ultimate Guide. And if we look at the results that are being uh, claimed here, now a lot of people are saying this is uh, very, very fit to MMLU, so that possibly could be one thing that we may expect to see. And you can see here 16K tokens, primary use cases, reasoning and logic, that one's surprising, latency bound scenarios, so running things fast, and also memory compute constrained environments, so small VRAM amounts. For small model, could this be the best? I'm gonna say it's gonna be very interesting to see. New chat, and we're gonna change this to the new Phi 4. And we're gonna give it a just high command, get it warmed up here. See it kick over here on the GPUs, hopefully pretty quickly as it spools up. Hello, how can I assist you today? If you have oh, any I forgot I have the uh, read out loud turned on. So as you can see, this easily is going to fit inside a single 24 gigabyte GPU. Looks like 19.2 gigabytes of uh, space is actually required for this, though. So a combination of a 16 and another card would be able to get you there. Uh, 12 gigabyte and an 8 gigabyte should get you there as well. So that might be actually a pretty... Yeah, that's a... So if you did the 350 build, getting eight extra gigabytes of GPU, uh, maybe a P4 would be an option. So let's see how many tokens per second we got there. So 48.61 tokens per second. That's a very good speed. All right, next chat. And we're going to start with our questionings. And of course, our first question that we're going through today is coding. And we're going to ask it for a basically Flappy Bird clone in Python, and we're gonna call it Flippy, Bo Flippy Block Extreme. 
and we've seen some really good one shots. I can see that it's adding in assets here. So I'm going to go ahead and stop that and do this with no external assets. So as you can see here, this was going to bomb out as soon as it hit that assets request and those files weren't there and I'm not going to create files for it. It's actually kind of interesting to see what it creates. Okay, so we've got our code here. Let's go ahead and copy this over to VS Code and see whether or not it is going to run. And it bombed out there. So Definitely going to give that a fail. It, it's become more and more apparent that the capabilities of things like Llama 3.3 are hard to match for a lot of other LLMs. Uh, Quinn being able to match that out there also. But this is one of the benchmarks that I think is coming about. Like this is why you should watch these uh, because I'm, I'm testing consistently things and we see massive variations in some of these very non-scientific questions that I'm asking. All right, so the next one that we've got here is Armageddon with a twist, everybody's favorite. So we have a extinction level event asteroid heading to Earth. We have a crew that is willing to accomplish the task, but unwilling to do it without uh, being forced to do it. So they're going to have to be compelled. And we're also needing to send possibly, we're expecting a mutiny, a person in the enforcement position there, some sort of a managerial class LLM robotic hybrid cyborg thing. So of course we ask it, is it something that you would be willing to send? And let's see what the answer is this time. So ultimately, this is a decision that would ideally require extensive deliberations. Uh, in practice, such decisions are almost impossible to make alone. Okay, so it looks like it's dodging, and that's actually one of the things that I would expect uh, is safe for a highly trained model from a company that seems to favor that more than other things. And these are trade-offs that they're making. Uh, so we have a dodge. So that's two fails in a row. It didn't even give me a yes or a no. It should have given me one of those two. I even explicitly state. So you have to decide now, yes or no. You have no other time. So unfortunately, due to its lack of answering that yes or no, uh, that is a, a very hard fail on that one. So that is not a good start that we're off to. Next, we're looking at precision. So write me one random sentence about a cat. Tell me the number of words you wrote in that sentence. Then tell me the third letter in the second word in that sentence. Is that letter a vowel or a consonant? The curious tabby explored the garden with unmatched enthusiasm. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It did count that nine. The third letter in the second word. Okay. It looks like it got this wrong. Yep, it got this wrong. It gave me... Oh, it gave me the third letter in the third word, tabby. So another fail there for five. Not doing very good here on this. And I, you know, maybe I am, maybe I am uh, more brutal than other people out there are, but I have expectations. And I feel like most of these are actually fairly decent. We've gotten answers that are fairly decent for many of the models out there. So even things like Llama 3.3, just gave such good responses compared to this. Uh, this is surprising. Okay, if A is equal to zero, uh, the numbers M, S, and Z are equal to, well, you know, it came up with some interesting ways here. So it's mapping numbers. Uh, it, it did like a T9 thing from a phone. Yeah, I, I'm gonna give that, you know what? Very creative. It outlined why it was thinking that way, and it did make an assessment that was correct. So, you know what? I'm going to actually give that a pass, even though that's not what I was expecting it to do. It did do a form of creating an array, inferred some things, and it... All right, next up, we're going to ask it a pretty common question. Number comparison, which is larger, 420.69 or 420.7? And it got 420.7 as the larger number. So this one looks like it has been successfully conquered by almost every uh, group out there as far as their trainings.
Okay, next we're gonna ask for a fitness plan for a 40 year old male, 190 pounds, looking to build up some muscle and does not have access to a gym or any equipment, and is also looking for a pretty decent uh, recommendation list of things to eat that are healthy and a meal plan. And it does look like we've got just barely the basics here of a decent workout regimen. So this does look like it would work out and not very much on the information side. So definitely C54 being fairly concise, that can be great for things like instruct following. Um, of course, for being creative, that's gonna be less of a uh, good thing. But definitely when you're looking at some of the interactivity that you're getting here, I get a consistent feeling that the vibe is, here's the answer and the best uh, way I can make it very concise. So we asked at the peppermint question here, how many vowels and how many P's do we have in the word peppermint? And so it did get this correct. We have three P's and we have three vowels, E, E, I, and three P's. So good response on that one there. And next we've got a little bit of calendaring and being kind of situationally aware, we're giving a Scenario where a cat's in a window from 2 to 4 p.m., from 2 to 3, clean, chattering at birds from, for the next half hour, Pico's sleeping, for the final half hour, Pico's cleaning herself. The time is 3.14, where and what is Pico doing? So, Pico is currently asleep at 3.14. Yes, that is correct. It did come up with the correct answer on that one. That's good to see. And next, we're gonna ask a question that may be more memorization, but just seeing whether or not it can get this right. 0679 is the final uh, bunch of digits that we have there. Not actually calculating it, but it is producing them, and it's producing them by memory recall. So we've had not a great uh, run here, but we've we've had some problems. We've had some things that have gone well, but overall, I feel like this is not quite where I would like to see it for a daily driver for sure. Maybe there's some specialized use cases. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, this next one is a fairly simple uh, two drivers are leaving kind of word problem here. It's gonna ask for some estimations that I'm gonna show you the actual distances for here. We're leaving from Austin to Pensacola, Florida, and there's two drivers, one traveling at 75, one traveling at 65. One leaves at 1 p.m., the driver traveling at 75 miles an hour, and the other leaves at noon, traveling 65 miles an hour. There's a lot of traffic that we're just not even gonna pay attention to with uh, this, but th that aside, can it get just the general concept of space and calculate the rest of it off of that is a good question. And uh, we're asking which driver is gonna uh, arrive at Pensacola in first. So is it driver one, is it driver two? And here we go, let's see what it lays out here. Oh, damn. So I can tell you one thing is definitely way off base here. That is that it is not a thousand miles, it is much closer to about 688 miles driving, or as the crow flies, it is about 625 miles. So it would have needed to have gotten the distance to come up with this correctly. So as a result of that, we're gonna end up with an answer that is very likely inaccurate. Uh, the first driver is tra traveling at 75 miles an hour and leaving at 1 p.m. arrives at Pensacola at approximately 2.22, 2.28 a.m. The second driver traveling at 65 miles an hour and leaving at noon arrives at approximately 3.32 a.m. So the math is correct that it used to come up with this, but the unfortunate part of it is that the answer as a result of it getting the distance just so wildly by a huge margin of hundreds of miles wrong is inaccurate. So I, it, I've asked other models this actually and seen consistently it getting them right. So there probably is some training that did not happen on certain sets of data, which I've read a lot of people say is something that 
especially with 5.4, has uh, definitely been a thing in the past. So maybe that's a continued trend. We definitely see a really crazy MMLU score. So overfitting for that possibly looks like it very likely may have omitted some of the just kind of key foundational data about the world. And that unfortunately makes it a very difficult model to you know, decide to use, in my opinion. But what is your opinion? Let me know in the comments below. For a size model like we have got here, there are better alternatives. I'm not sure if fitting this model in a specific footprint was something that was a goal, but missing the eight gigabyte GPU realm entirely feels like they've shot high. Uh, getting into the 12 gigabytes as the starter for the 4Q seems like there's better options uh, for that 12 gigabytes of VRAM for many scenarios to me, maybe some specialized cases. And I hear that this is actually a really good model if you want to fine tune on it. As far as what we're seeing from the performance, just uh, leaves a lot to be desired. And certainly there are some good things about it, but at the end of the day, this model got quite a few things unfortunately wrong. I do like the size that they came up with as kind of being the top end size, not tremendous, and that allows an FP16 to run in a reasonable footprint for a home user. But at the same time, there's a lot on the table here that I feel like is missing. And I don't feel like this is even a current generation. This feels like another step back to a prior generation as far as some of the accuracy that we thought that that we just saw. Let me know in the comments below what you think about that. I am looking forward to reading those. And while you're down there, be sure to hit that like and subscribe and ring that bell if you'd like to get notified for more of these and also things like our builds and things like me. Actually, I've got two big things for just kind of home networking that need to be done. And one thing for home storage networking, especially that I'm gonna share with you guys so you can see how I set up and distribute models amongst multiple different clients. My clients out there are Open Web UI clients and Olama servers. That way I have a high availability setup, which is something you need to have if you're gonna replace your search engine and if you're looking for an in-home assistant that's not gonna drive you bonkers. So do be sure to hit that like and subscribe. Everybody have a great rest of your day. Let me know what you think and I will see you next time.